This gooey white foam is about to become the core of one of the most expensive mattresses you can buy. It's made from natural latex, harvested by hand from rubber trees in Guatemala. Unlike memory foam, natural latex cores are hypoallergenic, biodegradable, and longer lasting. But those features come with a high price tag. A king-size mattress made with one of these cores can cost $2,600. A memory foam mattress of the same size costs less than half that. So how does tree sap become a bed? And what makes these mattresses so expensive? He wakes at 3 a.m. in Suchitepeques, Guatemala. Most of the country is asleep, but this is when latex tree tappers, like Doroteo Blanco, start their day. Bueno, eso es para aprovechar la humedad de la mañana. Es que el árbol entre más húmedo, pues se eh, eh, brota más el látex y ya que picar muy hora de la del calor, entonces lo que hace es resecarse y no produce, al contrario se coagula y ya no brota. There are over a million rubber trees on the Guatelinda plantation where Doroteo works. In the next four hours, he'll extract latex sap from around 700 of them. Sí, tiene un olor agradable cuando está recién salido del, del árbol. Las herramientas que cargo acá para elaborar, principalmente lo que es la cuchilla que utilizamos para trabajar, y un desinfectante, sí, que cargamos acá para desinfectar la cuchilla. Si acaso el árbol está enfermo, se desinfecta para no contagiar al otro, al otro árbol. Y con este ganchito que tenemos acá, es el que utilizamos para marcar la línea y no abusar del consumo establecido, porque recordemos que en este año comemos acá y el próximo año después de acá volvemos a comer enseguida de esto. Doroteo carves a careful spiral in the bark of this tree, letting the sap drip out. His technique is incredibly precise, something he's honed over 20 years on the job. Porque si nos metemos mal, lo que tiende es a, a chuparse o a encogerse el árbol, entonces se, se hace una grieta ahí y se daña el árbol. Se hacen unos nudos y ya no se puede cortar en los años siguientes. Ya nos, no, nos perjudicaría después. Entonces, eh, la profundidad donde tenemos que manejar y trabajar es a dos milímetros. Then he waits. y media, mediodía, entonces tenemos un lapso aquí que es así como de 4 o 5 horas de goteo y, y el árbol suelta lo que tiene y logramos recoger hasta litro o litro y medio por, por árbol. But judging how long that break should be is a balancing act. If he collects the liquid latex too late, it may congeal into less valuable crumb rubber, a material good for things like car tires, but useless for mattresses. During the summer low season, an average of 140 liters of natural latex slowly seep into Doroteo's buckets every morning. Double that in winter. Eh, se están picando entre 600 a 700 árboles. Se cortan un aproximado de tres árboles por minuto. Depende de la velocidad del, del trabajador. Hasta uno llegamos a cortar cuatro. Con el hecho de cortar un árbol no quiere decir que ya puedo picar. O sea, tengo que conocer todo lo que es el árbol para yo ser un picador. Porque yo puedo venir y corto el árbol, pero no sé qué estoy haciendo. Entonces, para eh, uno meterse bien a lo que es el árbol, uno tiene que darle corazón y centrarse. Y como un mes me llevé para, para ir aprendiendo. Y de hecho, aún sigo aprendiendo porque en la vida uno sabía sigue uno aprendiendo. Pues. Everything the tappers collect then goes straight to a nearby processing facility. Factory workers consolidate the morning's haul into tanks. They let it sit for 12 hours before processing it in a centrifuge to separate the rubber from the water. Then, 
they wait another 45 days for this concentrated latex to stabilize. This will be turned into foam through a method called the Dunlop process. It's based on a 19th century process for turning liquid latex into foam and is the most energy efficient method. It involves first mixing the liquid latex with a combination of stabilizers. This concoction is then whipped up into foam in this machine until it's the preferred density. Then, workers add a gelling agent and heat the foam with radio waves to harden or vulcanize the latex. Every week, about 40 tons of liquid latex foam moves from the processing facility to the mattress core factory. They need about 50 kilos of liquid latex to make one 30 kilo mattress. Once the core sets, workers wash, dry, and squish the mattress core's packaging. This factory produces around 600 mattresses per week. These particular cores will be shipped to a facility in Los Angeles where they'll be processed into the final mattresses and sold by the company Avocado. This core factory, centrifuge facility and plantation are all part of Grupo Fortaleza, a group dedicated to the sustainable production of liquid latex in southern Guatemala. Christian Close's family has run Guatelinda for over 50 years, only a decade longer than the average rubber tree can be tapped. Workers take care of Guatelinda's 2,000 acres of rubber trees. We are certified FSE. FSE stands for Forest Stewardship Council. Basically, you have to have no child labor, you have to only use organic products, you have to abide the laws of your country, and different things to certify that you're sustainable. The facilities are also GOALS, or Global Organic Latex Standard, certified. Products that carry the label must be made from 95% or more certified organic latex. These certifications add value to the final product and, consequently, zeros to the price tag. The rise of the auto industry in the early 1900s caused the demand for rubber to explode and plantations to pop up in places like Southeast Asia and Central and South America. But a rapid increase in production quickly led to falling prices, which often came at the expense of indigenous populations forced to work these forests, sometimes at the threat of violence. Since then, the world market for natural rubber has fluctuated greatly, usually moving in tandem with the demand for automobiles. In 2010, the price was very high, so a lot of people started planting rubbers, started buying a lot of land, and started acquiring a lot of debt. In the last 10 years, it's been fluctuating, and right now, it's not at career low, but I would say there are very low prices right now because of all the war in Russia and Ukraine, and all the sanctions being put in China and the lack of production in China as well, it has reduced the commodity price of natural rubber. It's times like these that plantation workers are most at risk of exploitation, which is what certifications like GOALS attempt to incentivize companies not to do. In 2021, the global latex mattress market was valued at $9.7 billion. By 2030, that number could double to around $20 billion. But maintaining the high standards that justify the mattress's final price tag isn't easy. In our history of planting trees, we've been through two or three hurricanes. When there's too much rain, you can't really harvest anything. You cannot tap because all the sap that, that's coming out of the tree, it turns to wash off. Second thing, it destroys roads, so you can't really transport anything. And third, well, people suffer a lot when the rivers tend to grow and they cannot go to work because everything is flooded. The opposite can also be devastating. If there is drought, if it's too dry, the rubber trees cannot produce enough latex for us to tap. 
workers on unregulated plantations can be exposed to harsh working conditions like 12-hour days, below minimum wages, and toxic chemicals. Because we're keen on getting premiums, we are usually profitable. So we can keep the jobs of our workers, we can keep tapping, and we can keep adding value to our latex 